Those of you that have been around on this channel for a little while will know that I've actually done a video about this already. However, the library has updated a lot and it's doing a lot of things differently. So I thought, especially with a lot of people commenting in the old video quite recently saying how it didn't really work, I would make a newer video uh, talking about you know how it is nowadays. Before we get into it, you need to have a Google Analytics project, sorry, Google Developers project with the YouTube Analytics API enabled. If you haven't done that, then I made a separate video about it, which you can click on the card in the top right. In that video, we talked about the YouTube data API, but the process is exactly the same for the Analytics API. So don't worry about that. Once you've done that, then we can get on installing the libraries that we need. And we only actually need one, uh, and that is uh, Analytics with an X. Now I do have a bit of a disclaimer um, in that I built this library. I am the developer of it, I made it, um, so I suppose if you could get a tutorial from anyone, might as well get it for the person that made it. But yeah, I suppose this is in a, in a way an advertisement, but I built it for this exact purpose, so I suppose it's fine. So we can uh, install that like that. We'll download all the things we need, and if we do python-m analytics, whoops, we can see, and I didn't spend uh, ages making this splash screen for nothing, you can see that we're using version 3.0.1. Uh, newer versions will have obviously new features, um, which we won't be covering in this video. If you look at this screen, it says version 4, which it's not going to for a very, very long time, hopefully ever. Um, but this video might not work for you. There might be a newer one, so just keep out for that. And we're using Python 3.10.3 .3 for this video in particular. So now that we've got everything uh, installed, what we need to do is we need to make a new file and we're going to call this, I don't know, retrieve data. Uh, and we're just going to have it as a .py file rather than a notebook or whatever. I might make this one bigger. There we go. Just so people can definitely see. And first we need to create the client that we're going to be, you know, retrieving the analytics using. So we can do from analytics, uh, import analytics. And then we could do client equals anal oh, analytics dot with secrets and you need to pass your secrets file in here. It has just occurred to me that I don't have my secrets file in this directory. I will need to go back and get that in a second. Um, but you would have downloaded a secrets file from the uh, from the Google Developers Console. This file is standardized, so using this class method is fine. It basically just means that you don't have to deal with the analytics classes um, initializer. I thought that having kind of the initializer way it is, and then this class method is like the best way of doing it. So I did it like that. Uh, so you could just create a client like that. I'm gonna quickly grab my secrets file and I'll be back with you in a second. Okay, so my secrets file is now in the directory. Imagine being prepared for a video. Yeah, good group. Right, anyway, uh, now we can actually start retrieving report. Actually, before I talk about that, I do wanna talk about authorization real quick. So Analytics um, uses OAuth2 uh, all requests to the, uh, the YouTube Analytics API have to be done through OAuth2. There's no way around it. So there are two ways that you can actually authorize analytics. The first is by just not bothering and analytics will you know do it for you or tell you when you need to do it. The second is you can actually do it manually. So you can do client authorize. <coughs> and at the very least in this version, um, it allows you to set you know custom uh, behaviors with authorization. Future versions might allow you to do it in the retrieve method, but this version does not. So you can set the token path, so analytics will you know save tokens for future reference, and you can also force authorization or reauthorization through here. So it you know, skips all the refresh checks and just makes you reauthorize it. We're not going to use that in this tutorial, but I thought I would let you know of that method just in case you wanted a little bit more control uh, about that. So uh, we can uh, now start retrieving our reports. So you can do report equals client.retrieve. And this retrieve um, is how you actually retrieve your reports. So you have all these things that you can pass to it. Uh, the documentation has, you know, actually this tooltip <clears throat> has a lot of the information in there. So you can read that kind of at your own pace when you do this yourself. I'm not gonna talk about everything. But this is basically all things you can pass the API up to like here, the skip validation, that is analytics options. Uh, but everything, like all of this is stuff that you can pass the YouTube analytics API. There is quite a lot of it. Um, and as you can see, all of it has a default. So where it is none, you know, there is a default set. So dimensions, that's an empty tuple. Filters, an empty dictionary. 
Uh, metrics is a bit different. It's all available metrics in a report. So chances are you don't really have to worry about metrics too much because if you don't pass any analysis, it will just go, oh, you want them all and it will just give you everything. But for the purposes of this demonstration, let's say we want to uh, get the views, likes and comments and shares, why not, um, across the whole channel over the last 28 days from the UK. Say we want to do that. So what we could do is we could pass uh, dimensions <coughs> equals day. Uh, and this means that the report will have a different row for every day. So if you didn't do this, it will return, you know, the total numbers. And if you'd want that, then you wouldn't pass this. But if you want it, you know, day by day, you could pass dimensions equals day. And it essentially splits the data in such a way that we can, you know, get it uh, day by day. Then we can have uh, filters, which is a dictionary. So we want to do country equals uh, GB. Or if you want to do it US, you can do it US as well. So this will uh, filter our data so we are now only getting stats um, from the UK. And you can pass, you know, any... I forget what ISO code it is now. I think it's 3166-2 or is it dash 3? It's one of them. But it's, it's the two-letter country codes, essentially. I think it's dash 2. Um, yeah, the documentation has the actual code in there. And then metrics, we can pass, you can pass it as a tuple. You can pass this as a list or a set as well. By the way, I'm just passing it as tuples because I prefer them. And then we can pass in your own know, views, likes, comments, and shares. And this one, I'll only get data, views, likes, comments, shares. Again, if you leave this blank, it will get everything. It won't get nothing, it will get everything. Uh, and then we can actually set, well, by default, it does it, you know, let's do it the last six months. Uh, because by default, it actually gets data for the last 28 days. But if you wanted to get it for the last six months, because I can at least show you this, we can pass a start date and we're going to do import dates time as DD. You know, let's just do it for 2021. That's just easy to explain. Uh, so uh, we can pass in, you know, 2021-1 here. And then in the end, we can also pass an end date. And we can pass 12, uh, 31. The reason I changed that example there was because it does 28 days by default. So the end date is, if you don't pass it, the end date is today. And then the start date, if you don't pass that, is 28 days before whatever you set the end date. So if you set the end date and not the start date, it will do uh, probably like the 3rd of December, I think. <clears throat> Something like that. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, but in this case, we're actually setting it um, the start date and the end date to get data across the entire year. And we can also, if we want to do, we can sort by views as well. Now in this form it will actually sort them, we need a trailing comma as well because it's a tuple. In this form it will actually sort it ascending. So to sort descending we pass a hyphen. So uh, negative views it will sort top to bottom. It's a weird syntax, this is just how the API wants it. It's very strange I know. Uh, there are other options, so we're not really going to bother with that for now. Uh, and then we're going to do, let's do report.2csv. Uh, and you notice that A to CSV, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then we could set that as like analytics2021.csv. If you don't pass this um, uh, .csv, it will put it there for you. What we can do is we could do, oh goodness, Python... Uh, retrieve data.py and it will now ask us to authorize because we don't have any tokens set we're getting this link which we can click and KD will go a bit nuts I've literally got to sign into my account <laughs> oh my goodness hang on give me a second yeah, this is pretty much a brand new install of a thingy so not everything's fully set up yet uh, so I can now select my YouTube channel I've had so many issues with Linux over the past two weeks it's unbelievable but that's a separate rant for a separate video. Let me hit allow, and then we get this code. So this code, it doesn't matter if I show it to you, this code is very temporary. I think it lasts maybe an hour, and once you've used it, it kind of nullifies itself, I think. Switch back, pass that in here, and now it's complete. So it's not giving us any information in the terminal because it didn't turn to print anything, but we have this analytics 2021csv at the side. We also have these tokens. I'm not gonna show you because these are my real actual tokens, uh, but if you like this CSV, and I use an extension called Excel Viewer to do this. It's it's a lifesaver. It's incredible. And I just get that. Uh, we can see 
Now we have our day, and it's not sorted by day because it's sorted by views. So I got, in 2021, the most amount of views I got from the UK in a single day was the 28th of August, uh, 2021. And I got 11 likes on that day, weirdly enough. And, yeah, Brits seem to not <laughs> hit the like button. I think we just forget. I always forget to do it. I, I think I think Brits just don't really care all that much, to be honest. I can see that as one myself. <clears throat> Uh, as you can see, you know, we're getting views. Did I? What was the worst? I got, I got fourteen from the from the UK one day. That's interesting. Um, yeah. This, so this is my actual data as well, by the way. So I probably should have chosen a different country in the UK because I don't really get a lot of views in the UK. I don't think. But um, yeah. So you can kind of see how that's working. So there are a few other things that I want to show you while I'm here. So the first is the ability to do all that asynchronously. So we can do asynchronatics, class that as asynchronatics, I'm going to do async def main, uh, and then put that all in here. And we can do await client.retrieve, and then await report.a to CSV. It doesn't return separate objects. Um, it returns the same report object, so uh, that's why there's some inconsistencies about whether the method names are the same or not. Uh, I might change that potentially, we'll see. Um, I'm going to have to find a way to do that without breaking changes though, so that's going to be fun. And then if we do, if we import a syncio, doesn't matter, I'm doing it down there, and then a syncio.run and then main, it should do exactly the same thing. Once we actually get the terminal, there we go. The difference is, oh yeah, this needs to be uh, awaited as well. Imagine not knowing how to use your own library. <clears throat> It'll do the same thing. Note how it hasn't told us to authorize because we've authorized this. Uh, or, sorry, we authorized earlier. It's using the tokens.json. This actually has a refresh token in it as well. So you won't have to authorize for seven days if your application is set to testing mode, which it more than likely is, or ever if it isn't. Uh, Google's things work very weird, but as you can see, the data actually you know, let's let's show you that the data is different and that it's actually doing it. So let's let's actually get things from the US and let's actually get rid of these metrics as well. And we're still sorting by views, uh, so you can see there's a lot more metrics here. So there's always views, red views, uh, and everything. And yeah, uh, the numbers are completely different as well. Uh, so that was just showing you that. You know, it is actually getting the data asynchronously as well. One last thing, uh, very quickly before we go, is if we just import analytics, you can actually get analytics to output what it's doing. Uh, I can't even spell. Uh, so you could do uh, analytics dot setup logging, and this creates and enables a logger. If you do it now. You can see what it's actually doing. So it's loading the sequence, it's validating requests. You can see the data it's getting by. You can see the report type. So the report type changes based on dimensions and stuff. If I were to do dimensions country, this probably isn't the most useful thing considering we've got a country filter. Uh, oh yeah, because we have the country filter. That's not allowing me to do that. Uh, we could do, you know, geography based activity is there instead now. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, you can see kind of all that's what it's doing. If you have it on uh, debug mode, you can see a lot more. There's just sensitive data in there, so I'm not doing it for you there. That also gave you an example of the error handling, so you can see uh, because uh, dimensions are passed as a country, the report type that it selected didn't support having a filter as a country. So it told you, and it didn't waste a request on your API quota like you would have to if you weren't using analytics. So that's one you know big advantage to using it. So one. Last thing, one very, very last thing that I just remembered I need to show you is uh, the ability to convert your report type into a data frame. So for that, you need pandas installed. It doesn't install it automatically because I didn't really want to have all these extra dependencies necessary when a lot of people might not use it. But uh, we'll just wait for that in the background. We're doing this. And if you do df equals report dot to data frame, so this, uh, you can't do this asynchronously because pandas, but you wouldn't need to probably anyway. And just do df dot head. Oops, that's just installing pandas again. Uh, you can see that, oh, I didn't didn't print. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm in a Jupyter notebook here. Uh, there we go. So it's created a shape of 149. And you could do, you know, it's, it's creating a data frame as you can see. If we set dimensions back to day, an extra bit of information we can see, converted day column to date time 64 NS format. It does that automatically for you. 
So that just makes it a lot easier to graph on matplotlib graphs and everything like that. You can get it to not do that. There is a Boolean to stop it from doing that, but I can't see why you'd ever really need to. Uh, but yeah, that is really everything I need to show you now. I just remember that was very important. Um, so I just wanted to quickly go over that. But those are the basics of analytics. I'll leave kind of everything else to advanced users and those that want to kind of dig into this a lot more. Um, because there are uh, there are a lot more options, but if I were to talk about all those, I'd be here for hours. Because uh, the YouTube Analytics API is very complicated. If you like this video, then leave me a like to let me know. It helps out a lot. And subscribe uh, if you want to see more things like this. Um, but yeah, I would like to thank my amazing patrons on screen now. One pound a month and you could be on that screen too. And I will see you next time where we do whatever. Hopefully the Perfect Python series. Who knows, this video got delayed because Linux is being a nightmare, so it might not quite come out in time. We'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll see you for that.